Dying Light. Should you buy it? We saw a flare nearby. I bet someone ran into Welcome to a review series called Late Reviews, in which we play and review games sometime after their release date to see if they are worth a buy in the current state that they are in. If this review helps you in any way, or you want to see more, leave a like or even subscribe to the channel if you're really feeling it. This review will be in the 21 by 9 aspect ratio to give it a cinematic feel, and also because it is the native resolution of my monitor and makes it far easier to record. Dying Light was first released in January of 2015 and is a first person survival horror action adventure game. That is a mouthful. This game is a zombie game which involves parkour, slicing up zombies, and overall gameplay that is full of momentum and action. This video will be covering purely the base game for Dying Light. I will cover the following DLC in a separate video if you people want to see it. This review will be split into various categories, starting with graphics. Despite the fact this game was released over three years ago, it still looks pretty amazing. From the sun flares, the vast open expansive world, and even the dark dingy corridors and buildings that you'll find yourself in. This game will impress you with how it looks, including the ability to climb up to a high point in the map, and being able to see pretty much the entire map with incredible draw distance. Some textures may appear a little low res or a little bit blurry, but the ones that do are hardly even noticeable when you're zipping through the city at immense running speeds. There are some models that are basically just flat with a static texture on it, but unless you're getting down and dirty with the cockroaches, you shouldn't notice it or have any trouble. Leading on from graphics, we have atmosphere, and immersion. For a game that is deemed as a survival horror game, immersion is possibly the most important factor in successfully presenting the game. But does Dying Light draw you in? Definitely. When you first enter the game, you will quickly learn that the world is heavily populated with hordes of zombies, causing you to use caution and think about your actions if you don't want to end up in a 15 zombie pileup on the freeway. When you experience nighttime for the first time in this game, you will truly experience your first real terrified moment within this game. As you run and jump through the pitch black streets of Haran in an attempt to get away from literal nightmares. After this moment, the game maintains a day night cycle, causing you to constantly watch the clock so as to not be trapped outside when it gets dark. Nighttime in this game will make your heart race and make you feel fully immersed and terrified. This game is also bright when it needs to be and almost borderline pitch black at other times, greatly reducing your vision in dark buildings or during the night. Again, adding to that uncertainty, which in turn piles on the immersion and atmosphere. Next up, we have another contributing factor to the atmosphere of this game, which is music, sounds and voice. Starting with music. This game's music gives a certain unexplainable feeling that creates a very eerie, but also intense and exciting vibe. The main songs and soundtrack aren't inherently scary or over the top, but have dark undertones and truly seem to fit the game way more than they should. They give off an 80s synth vibe, which is incredibly unique and sets the soundtrack apart from many other games. Other tracks that are used for scary or intense parts of the game make your heart pound and almost makes the adrenaline in your body swell up without even playing the game. But honestly, I could probably harp on about the soundtrack for hours, but to summarize, it's fantastic. 
Next up, we have sounds. From the growls of idle zombies waiting below on the street, to the horrifying screams of volatiles and virals, the sound of a blade slicing through multiple zombie heads, and the impact of a bow flying directly through a zombie's eye. This game has a wide variety of sounds which vary from scary to downright disgusting. The sounds work well with the environment and react to the type of location you're in, such as echo within a tunnel. The guns sound pretty strong, but a little lackluster. But the true sound is when you're up close and personal, slicing up zombies, or when you're sneaking around a house and hear the faint growl of a zombie in the next room. Then, we have voice. But the next two Anderson drops are coming down right at sunset tonight, and Brecken means to go after them. This may be our only chance to reach the airdrop. What's my part here? Well, as I said, going out at night is basically suicide. I cut my arm getting away from him. Oh, God. You had to kill him, didn't you? God damn it! That was... That was my brother. What? What's happening to me? Chris? Shit. 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 Talk to me. What's going on? Something went wrong. Raheem. The voices in this game are manageable. The accents of the characters seem to match and suit the location where this game takes place. But none of the voice acting in this game is incredibly immersive or exciting and doesn't really make you feel any connection or emotion for any of the characters, including your own. Besides a few witty or funny one-liners, the dialogue is relatively alright. And now we'll move on to possibly the most exciting aspect of this game, gameplay. Will this game make you want to play it? just to do some parkour or bash a few zombie heads in your spare time. Absolutely, I would say the gameplay within Dying Light is one of its top factors and truly brings the game together, as it should in a game about killing zombies. The zombie AI is as expected, stupid as hell and will literally trip over anything that isn't completely flat. They can be easily escaped just by climbing up a few feet as well. As for the human enemies, they are much better but will at least dodge and block your attacks, which can quickly lead to you dying. The enemies with guns will also take cover, which again, kinda adds to their AI, but they're still not incredible. Viral and volatile zombies will sprint and parkour to chase you or get to you, so climbing up with these suckers won't get you away for long. The true excitement comes from the parkour, which is incredibly shaky when you first start the game, as your character is learning parkour from pretty much scratch. He will also run out of stamina very easily, causing you to stop and catch your breath quite often. But as you progress through the game and progress your skills in agility, your character will become an absolute parkour legend, allowing you to traverse just about any object throughout the city, including vaulting over zombies. You will also unlock a grappling hook, which allows for much easier travel and escape from pursuing foes. The combat in this game has a very similar progression curve in which you will start by struggling to kill even a single zombie, often causing you to run away from a group of four or more. At the early stages, you can only get a few weapon swings off before becoming exhausted and having to retreat to allow your stamina to return, and you will often be forced to take on zombies with nothing but an old rusty pipe. But once again, as you progress through the game, you'll develop greater combat skills and find better weapons which will increase your zombie killing effectiveness by at least 400%. This game is an open world game and you can explore as much as you want and are not confined to a linear path like other games. There are tons of weapons and the ability to craft jury-rigged weapons such as a pipe wrench that will electrocute enemies 
as well as upgrade weapons to be more powerful or more durable. The volatiles that come out at night are burnt and cannot handle UV lights, so you are given a UV flashlight to keep them away, as well as traps that can be found around the city, causing a UV light to turn on, slowing them down if they are chasing you. The game has large skill trees that allow for all manner of items and skills to be acquired, and gives you hundreds of ways to kill zombies, which I'll let you discover for yourself. There are also multiple difficulty options, which not only increase the health and damage of the enemies, but also decrease the effectiveness of some of your skills. An example of this is an ability that you start the game with, in which you can scan the nearby area to see any items or dangerous enemies nearby. As you ramp up the difficulty, this no longer seems to work for many items and you often find yourself having to use your own keen sense, as well as the minimap not showing enemies such as volatiles on harder difficulties, meaning you will have to look out for them yourself. Venturing out at night also provides incentives such as double experience gain during the night time and higher chances to find more powerful weapons. I will sometimes play this game for just 5-10 to 10 minutes because I feel like doing some hardcore parkour or throwing some zombies off a bridge. And now we have content. Are you going to be able to play this game for 3 hours or 300 hours? This game definitely has enough content to keep you entertained for plenty of time. According to the website, How Long to Beat, this game will take 17 hours if you do only story and rush through it, to 48 hours if you go completionist. Now of course this only includes the base game and doesn't include any of the DLC which can bump the game up to 80 plus hours. Personally, I have 109 hours as of recording this video. The creators of this game are currently in the midst of releasing 10 free pieces of DLC, of which they have already released 6, some of which have added whole new game areas for free. That's right guys, 3 years later and new content is still being added. The base game also has two full open world maps, and once both are unlocked you can travel between them freely, so plenty to do and explore. Now, obviously, how the game actually performs is incredibly important to an enjoyable game experience. Now I was running this game on the PC on a GTX 1080 and was running the game at a 3440 by 1440 resolution and managed to stay above 60 frames per second 99% of the time. Every so often I may hit a slight lag spike or a drop in frames, but these aren't common issues and they really don't affect anything. And story. Don't worry guys, I will try my hardest not to ruin anything from the story past the first few quests. In this game you are dropped into Haran, a city with a zombie outbreak and are tasked with retrieving top secret files for an organization you work for. And obviously, it doesn't go too smoothly. The story in this game is alright, but nothing to write home about, and if you're the type of person who wants an intense and compelling story, I wouldn't recommend this game as your first pick. Now we move on to the overall experience and verdict. This game is possibly one of my favorite all-time games. Due to the addictive fun of the gameplay, which almost never gets boring or dull. The length of the game and how much there is to do. And the incredible support provided by the creators of this game over three years after its release. Despite all this, the story falls a little short, which also includes the voice acting. But in my opinion, this hardly lets the game down. This game is currently $40 on Steam for the base game or $60 for the enhanced edition which includes a bunch of DLC, which I would highly, highly recommend. But if that is a bit much for you, the game regularly goes on sale, both on Steam and also on a website called Gemly, which I believe is owned by the creators of Dying Light. These discounts are usually around 60% off, bringing the Enhanced Edition down to a measly $24. Just in case you weren't already sure, I would definitely say yes to buying Dying Light. If you're in a bit of a pickle, wait for a sale, as they come around fairly often. But either way, this game is fully worth the price. Anyway guys, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. This was my late review on Dying Light. If you guys enjoyed this video, maybe leave a little baby like, or even subscribe for more late reviews in the future. 
and let me know if you'd be interested on a review for the following DLC for Dying Light. Anyway guys, catch you later.